Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. A dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to place uh, eight luminaires on this patient, and we'll do it in a space of a, about an hour and a half to maybe an hour and 45 minutes. We have a dental phobic in the chair who would like to have a more attractive smile. She doesn't want her teeth ground down. For all the patients you've treated, there's 200 more that you haven't treated for every one who would accept porcelain veneers, would like to look better if we didn't have to have dentistry's traditional methodology of delivering services to the patient. Now traditionally your technician tells you if you want this to look good you're going to have to remove more tooth structure and uh, that's not my paradigm. My paradigm for the last 25 years is I tell the technician this is all the tooth structure I want to remove now I want you to make it look good. What are your two most reliable surfaces you can bond to? Porcelain and enamel. But you didn't know that. We bond porcelain to porcelain routinely. Now, before we get started, you want to have everything prepared. And Lisa has everything ready to go here. So let's take a look at Lisa's uh, setup. And the first thing uh, Lisa's done to the porcelain veneers is she's treated them with porcelain conditioner. And then she's treated them with the silane. And you got to treat the conditioner on first, which is an organic acid. Though if you used an inorganic acid, like phosphoric acid instead of citric acid, it won't activate your silane, then you'll have pop-offs. So that's a big problem. Let's take a look at your teeth. Now she has a rather attractive smile, good occlusion. She's one of your patients that you give six months checks to, and we'll see you in six months. But uh, we're going to give her a much lighter shade, and we didn't grind away any sensitive tooth structure. And I haven't ground any way on patients in 25 years. And we're going to put some paint on dental dam here, open wide. And we put this on the lingual side of the teeth, and this is the same material that you use that block out the teeth when you're doing chair side whitening. And we take a moment to do this because it'll prevent the ultra bond and the tenure from adhering to the surfaces that we don't want it to bond to, namely the lingual side of the teeth. Now when there's a space between the teeth, like there is between this left lateral, you want to be very careful not to let the paint on dental dam go through the diastema from the lingual to the labial and prevent it from uh, allowing the veneer to seed all the way. Close your eyes now. And give it a three second burst. We use the lingual paint on dental dam, the blue. And that's so you'll have contrast when you're removing it from the ultra bond in the tooth. Now we're going to begin surface preparation here. And I'm going to use the 35% or 30% phosphoric acid with aluminum oxalate. And the reason I use uh, etching seal is because it uh, has aluminum oxalate in it. And the aluminum oxalate, when you're using etching seal on your regular operative procedures, will seal the dental tubules. And of course, if you seal the tubules, you prevent sensitivity. 
So now if any of these teeth were porcelain, we would micro etch them. Then we would treat the surface with porcelain. And uh, porcelain is hydrofluoric acid, but it has a pH of only 2.9. Now the hydrofluoric acid that dental laboratories use to etch your porcelain is 0.9. So it's very highly concentrated. Now I'm applying the Tenure Dentin Bonding Agent. Tenure was developed by Dr. Ray Bowen. Nobody's developed a better dentin bonding system than Dr. Bowen. Some years ago, he came to me at the ADA meeting in Atlanta and said, Bob, I got this fantastic dentin bonding system, but he said, it's nine steps and nobody wants it. So we took out a license with the ADA and had our chemists work on it. And we got it down to two bottles, 10-year A and 10-year B. We mix them just before we apply it. It's light independent. And all I can say is that nobody's developed a better bonding system than Dr. Bowen has. All right, so now we've prepared the surface of the enamel. As I said, if we had porcelain in here, we would use different solutions and materials, but this is all enamel. Right central, okay. So we apply that with the Lumi Grip, okay. And we're gonna show you the difference between using try-in paste and not using try-in paste. Remember these luminaires are the same shade. If they're the same shade veneer, why aren't they the same shade on try-in? And the difference is when light goes through a medium uh, and uh, it doesn't exceed the critical angle. It continues going until it bounces back at you. And the problem is that on the etched surface where there's no try-in paste, you're getting back the bounce back from the etched surface. So that gives you a different color than the color that you're going to get when you have the try-in paste in. And do you like the shade on the left better or the shade on the right better? This shade? This shade. It's your left. Okay. Very good. So we'll take this off. Now the Ultrabond try-in paste is exactly the same as Ultrabond except it doesn't have any activator in it. I want to get this uh, try-in paste off, and I want to get it off with a solution called Tenure S. This is the most critical part of what I'm doing today. Once you've got the surface prepared, a race begins between contamination and resin. Whoever gets there first wins. And so by putting the Tenure S on, then that prevents contamination from winning. On the left cuspid. in the left bicuspid. Brush. I'm going to take the two millimeter tip for one second. Close your eyes. See, if I was fooling around with uh, celluloid strips between the teeth, 
I wouldn't have the flexibility I have right now. And by giving a two millimeter tip a one second burst, I just fix it so it won't go floating off the tooth. Now we go to the right side. You should keep that suction going. This right now is probably the most critical part of the whole process. Rush. Okay, now I'll take the two millimeter tip again. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. A 10 year S is a bond enhancer. So 10 year S will bond all of these if you never put a light on it. And I did that one time on my secretary. I was placing eight veneers and Lisa also used this to clean out the veneers that were disparate shades. I got the try-in paste out of there because the try-in paste won't set. And obviously, she never get all of it out, will she? Most of it, but never all of it. So what she doesn't get out gets polymerized by the 10-year S. I'm using the 9 millimeter tip now for 5 seconds on each tooth. And I'm going to bond 8 porcelain veneers in less than 1 minute. Close your eyes. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to take off the lingual side of the paint on dental dam. Look how nice that lingual looks right now. Now I'm going to blend the Ultra Bond and the porcelain and the tooth structure all together on the lingual side. I'm using an American football shaped diamond. It's all in your finishing kit. And I'm going to blend this material together. I don't know how many have used magnification. The reason you want four power magnification is I am visually this close to the surface. Remember, this patient is not anesthetized. And so I want to have complete control. Physically, I'm this far from the patient. If you work with less than four power magnification, then you don't have that advantage. It's that little bit of difference that enables me to stay away from the sensitive part of the tooth and give me the ability to get close in there. So now all I'm doing is some very boring stuff on cleanup and somebody would say, well, if you had cleaned it up first, you wouldn't have as much to do. And then I say, well, the problem with that is that if you did all the cleanup, you might dislodge the luminaire and get a void in there. Now the next step is to remove the excess ultra bonds so your patients can floss. And I'll show you why that's important. So I take a 12 fluted burr, turn her head over here. And now because I'm wearing that magnification, I can get right into those interproximal embrasures and not touch sensitive tooth structure. And if I touch anything that's sensitive, you tell me right away and I'll stay away from that area. Now the Ultra Bond is much softer than the porcelain, so I like to remove that first. This is where you bring these things to life. So if you ever see a Lumineer that doesn't look good, it's probably because it's not finished. Now I'm using a Shure 349 instrument. 
There we go. I can tell you now that if on your six-month check appointments, if you asked your patient that if I could change your smile without giving you a shot and make your teeth look just beautiful, would you like to have that done? And I'm going to tell you, if money's not a factor, 9 out of 10 would say yes. Now let's take a look at the occlusion. Open. Close. Look how nice those margins are, the incisal edges are. And uh, now we're going to go back and finish. Now, we're not even close to being finished here because we're going to take the diamonds and we're going to open those interproximal embrasures. And think about this. If I never created a shoulder in the tooth, I've created one now, haven't I? Because I made the porcelain thicker. So now I'm going to go back after I've checked her occlusion and I'm going to trim all those margins and make them blend with the tooth the same way, what? Enamel blends with the tooth. But take a look now at the occlusion because this is where you need to spend your time. And wherever you see that blue marks and it's on the porcelain, you'd better get some relief in there. Now here, you've got a good mark here on this bicuspid, natural tooth structure, natural tooth structure. But these areas, if you don't accommodate the occlusion, are waiting to be chipped off. So I'm going to start taking and blending some more. You see, you always get that incisal overlap. Let's take a look at these lower anterior teeth. Can you see those? I'm going to take off the labial angle. I'm not going to shorten the teeth. I'm going to, at a 45 degree angle, create some harmony in here. Now one of the things you have to do is teach your patients how to close a little bit better. Open wide. Let's see what we got here. Well, it looks how much better it looks on those lower anteriors now. Let's take a look at the maxillary. Oh, look how much better these incisals look now. And how long did that take? About 10 seconds of grinding and about five minutes of talking. Now what I'm going to do is take the long diamond now. I'm going to go back where I went with the 12 fluted burr. My objective now is to blend the porcelain with the enamel so that when I run an explorer in there, there's no shoulder detection. Okay, you ready for the moment of truth? Are we going to get through these contacts? This is developed by a very famous dentist by the name of Dr. Putter. He developed this little thing called the Seri saw. Look at that. Look how easy that went through, right? See how I'm opening these contacts right now? And it just goes right through that with the Seri saw. And the ones I don't open today, can you over here? I open tomorrow. And the ones you don't open today, the ones you don't open today will, in many cases, when the patients come back on their second visit, open themselves. They'll break loose. What I'm doing now is using the Seri sander to come through these contacts. And I just go back and forth so when we run the floss through, it'll go through nice and easy. Now, everybody's got to look at these but you. You want to peek? All right. What do you think? You want to keep them? Huh? Did you think it was going to look this good? I have no idea. No idea. Surprise you? Satisfy you? Very good. I've got to tell you, it's been a lot of fun being with you guys today. And if you get a chance to come up here and visit us, we'd always enjoy seeing you. Montreal, I'll bet you'd like to come here in January, yeah? Okay. See everybody. My name's Narelle Gorman. I'm the Director of Marketing for Einstein Dental. I've been in the uh, dental industry for over 12 years. I went to uh, the Las Vegas 
Lumineers seminar mm -hmm. in November of last year, so November of 06. I thought I can do that because I I'd actually three years ago I had um, finally scheduled to have veneers done on my teeth. However, I'm very dental phobic and I was just petrified of it. And, you know, I'd lost like a week's worth of sleep getting ready for this appointment. I think the Lumineers are wonderful and the people here at Denmark made me feel very comfortable. It was the most comfortable experience I've had in a dental chair. When I sat down in the chair, there was no pain. That was the thing that was really amazing to me. I kept waiting for, okay, wait for it. When, when's, the, when's the drilling coming in and when, when is it really going to start to hurt? And in all seriousness, the, the most awkward part of it was the water.